now.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez as we turn now to one of the better known tragedies from Israel's attack on Gaza, a tragedy that partly unfolded live on Israeli television. Dr. Ezzedin Abulaish is a well known Gazan gynecologist, peace advocate, who's worked in Israeli hospitals for several years. He speaks fluent Hebrew, and during the war, he was a rare Palestinian voice on Israeli television and radio, giving daily accounts of life and death inside Gaza. Democracy Now! producer Anjali Kamet narrates the exchange that took place live on Israeli television a day and a half before the official end of what the Israelis called Operation Cast Lead. On January 16th, when Dr. Abu Laish called Shlomi Eldar of Israel's Channel 10 TV News, Israeli tank shells had just struck his home. They killed his family, he says. I think I'm a bit overwhelmed, too. He explains that Dr. Abu Laish is a physician at Tel HaShomer Hospital. He always feared his family would be hurt. His daughters were injured. I want to save them, but they died on the spot, Shlomi. They were hit in the head. A visibly emotional Eldar explains that the doctor had unsuccessfully tried to get out for many days and was afraid to even raise a white flag. A shell hit his home, Eldar says, and I have to tell you, I do not know how to hang up this phone. I will not hang up this phone call. The anchor calls on the Israeli Defense Forces to allow ambulances to get to the doctor's family. Shlomi Eldar then excused himself from the show, took off his earpiece, and rushed off the set to get help to Dr. Abulesh. But the ambulances never reached the doctor's home, um, which was surrounded by Israeli tanks. It was too late to save his three daughters, 21-year-old Bassan, 15-year-old Mayar, and 13-year-old Aya, as well as his niece, Noor, who was age 14. They were all killed instantly by the shells. The f uh, the, f the family says they walked a quarter of a mile carrying the dead and wounded through the streets until they found an ambulance that took them to the closest hospital and then to the Erez crossing with Israel. Uh, emergency vehicles organized by Israeli TV correspondent Shlomi Eldar uh, waited them at the border and took the doctor and his badly wounded 16-year-old daughter Shada to the Sheba Medical Center in Tel Aviv. Two months after the tragedy, Democracy Now! producer Anjali Kamet and Jackie Suin of Big Noise Films visited Dr. Abu Lalaish at his home in Jabalia, Gaza. He pointed out the remnants from that fateful day. Blood-stained walls, books, clothes, and hand-drawn pictures, gaping holes that were at once windows, burned-out bits of computers, twisted pieces of metal, destroyed cupboards, shattered glass, and shrapnel. He told a story late Monday night to Anjali Comet as he walked through his daughter's room. We are standing in the scene of the tragedy, in the place where four lovely girls were sitting, building their dreams and their hopes. And in second, these dreams were killed. These flowers were dead. Three of my daughters and one niece were killed in one second. On the 16th of January, 
at a quarter to 5 p.m. Just a few seconds, I left them. And they stayed in the room. Two daughters here, one daughter here, one daughter here, and my niece with them. The first shell came from the tank's base, which is there, came to shell two daughters who were sitting here on their chairs. And when I heard this shell, I came inside the room to find, to look, I can't recognize my daughters. Their heads were cut of their bodies. They were separated from their bodies and I can't recognize whose body is this. They were drowning in a pool of blood. This is the pool of blood, even look here. This is their brain. These are parts of their brain. Aya was lying on the ground. Shada was injured and her eye is coming out. Her fingers were torn, just attached by tag of skin. I felt slaved, out of space, screaming, what can I do? They were not satisfied by the first shell and to leave my eldest daughter. But the second shell soon came. To kill Aya, to injure my niece who came down from the third floor, and to kill my eldest daughter, Bisan, who was in the kitchen, and came at that moment screaming and jumping. My dad, dad, Aya is injured. The second shell, it penetrated the wall between this room to enter the other room. Look, this is the room where the weapons, where this room was fully equipped with weapons. These are the weapons which were in this room. These are the weapons. These are the weapons, the box and their clothes. These were Bisan's handouts. Here, you see, these are her handouts for the courses that she studies, which is stained with her blood. It's mixed with her blood. These are the books, these are the weapons that I equipped my daughters with, with education, with knowledge, with the dreams, with hopes, with loves. I am a gynecologist who practiced most of my time in Israel. I was trained in Israel, and I devoted my life and my work for the benefit of humanity and well-being to serve patients, not as someone else that you are delivering or helping you. I am dealing with patients and the human being. We treat patients equally, with respect, with dignity, with the privacy. Politicians and leaders should learn from doctors these values and these norms and to adopt them. Have you received an official response from Israel about why your home was targeted, about why your daughters were killed? What I received that they admitted their responsibility about chilling my house and killing my daughters and my niece. That what I received, but other, the reasons behind that, you can ask them, they justified something which is not convincing and it has many criticisms.